Good morning, everyone. My name is Elizabeth Church. I'm the Vice President Academic here at the Mount. And I'd like to welcome you to this most happy occasion. Would you please stay standing for uh, God Save the Queen. I would like to invite Sister Evelyn Williams to come forward to give the invocation. And so we pray. O Holy One of Mystery, known by many names, heard through many voices, we acknowledge your presence with us this day. It is with grateful hearts that we gather to celebrate the accomplishments of the graduates of 2012. As we call to mind the path that has brought them to this day, we remember the times of new beginnings, adjustment, struggle, happiness, and success. We bring all these memories to our celebration today, knowing their place in our search for fullness of life. We gratefully remember all those who have encouraged, taught, and nurtured us on this journey. For proud parents, grandparents, spouses, and children, for teachers, mentors, professors, and for faithful friends, people whose love, encouragement, and support help deepen our faith in ourselves and our commitment to our goals. Take us beyond the vision of this day be with us as we draw upon the wisdom and experience gained here and continue to use our many gifts of intellect, heart, and soul to build a world of peace and justice for all. Amen. Thank you, Sister Evelyn. Please be seated. I would like to invite our President, Vice Chancellor, Dr. Ramona Lumpkin to come forward. Madam Board Chair, Madam Chancellor, distinguished guests, faculty, graduates, family, and friends. It's my great pleasure to welcome you to Mount St. Vincent University's Fall 2012 Convocation. We gather this morning and afternoon to celebrate the accomplishments of over 340 of our students, graduating from a wide range of degrees in arts, science, education, and professional programs. We're very proud of today's graduates and congratulate you on reaching <clears throat> this stage and on your success in completing your degrees and we're very happy to celebrate your success today. During fall convocation we will bestow honorary doctorate degrees on two exceptional individuals who have distinguished themselves in their lives and careers. This fall's honorary doctorate recipients have demonstrated exemplary and compassionate leadership. Their dedication has made a lasting difference to the lives of the women, men, and children on whose behalf they have labored. We're so pleased to be able to recognize their worthy contributions to social justice and community health. Dr. Joan Glode 
is a proud and respected member of the Mi'kmaq First Nations community of Acadia. As one of the first people from the Mi'kmaq community to graduate with a master's degree from the Maritime School of Social Work, Dr. Glode has dedicated her life's work to advocating and working for Aboriginal families and children. She will be receiving her honorary doctoral degree during our afternoon convocation. Originally from Toronto, Dr. Margaret Casey journeyed to Nova Scotia in pursuit of a career in medicine. Following graduation from the Faculty of Medicine at Dalhousie University, she has come to be regarded as an exceptional and compassionate physician with a deep social conscience, advocating for the underserved members of our community. We're very pleased that Dr. Casey will be receiving her honorary degree during our morning ceremony. Convocation celebrations are a time for us to acknowledge individuals who have made a significant contribution to our university. Could you please rise, Dr. Sheila Brown? <clears throat> Dr. Sheila Brown, President of the Mount from 1996 to 2006, has been granted the status of President Emerita by vote of the University's Board of, Gover of Governors and our Senate. The title President Emerita is bestowed upon presidents of Mount St. Vincent University who have retired from their position as president and who have rendered exceptionally distinguished service to the university during their term of office. We're very pleased to be able to recognize Dr. Sheila Brown's very significant contributions to the Mount. During her leadership as president, she championed excellence in teaching, accessibility, community engagement, and the advancement of women. She was and continues to be recognized widely by peers across the country and internationally. During her tenure as president, Dr. Brown reaffirmed the Mount's commitment to academic excellence, overseeing an expansion of the education program, the development of a cooperative education option for arts and science students, the establishment of the Family Studies and Gerontology program, and the creation of several new graduate programs. On the international stage, she oversaw significant growth in the university's online and distance programs, particularly in Jamaica, Barbados, St. Lucia, and through notable partnerships with Bermuda College. Among Dr. Brown's many awards and recognitions, she was given the Queen Elizabeth II Golden Jubilee Medal. She's a distinguished member of the Canadian Society for the Study of Higher Education, was awarded the Canadian Progress Club Halifax Cornwallis Woman of Excellence Award, and was inducted into the Atlantic Business Magazine Top 50 CEO Hall of Fame. We're very proud to have Sheila Brown represent Mount St. Vincent University as President Emerita. Congratulations, Dr. Brown. I would also like to make note of a few other special achievements within our community. A member of our staff, Carrie Alcede, Administrative Assistant, Biology, Chemistry, and Physics, Mathematics, and Computer Science, is graduating with her Certificate in Business Administration. Congratulations, Carrie. <clears throat> Halima Ahmed Abdili won a scholarship to come to Mount St. Vincent University to study four years ago as the Mount's first sponsored refugee student through the World University Services of Canada program. Halima is from Somalia and came to us from the Dadaab refugee camp in Kenya. Against staggering odds, this remarkable young woman completed her high school degree in Dadaab and competed successfully for a place in a Canadian university. While here, Halima has made an extraordinary contribution to the Mount, working tirelessly to build our WUSC local committee. She's also worked in the Students' Union, in the Registrar's Office, and as a liaison in the International Education Center. Halima has never shied away from an opportunity to educate our students about girls' education and the difficulty of girls getting an education in the developing world through sharing her own personal story. 
She's done countless class presentations and has spoken at International Women's Day and the Mount's Girls 2012 Conference, where local high school students were inspired by her journey. Today, Halima will be graduating with her Bachelor of Business Administration degree. Congratulations, Halima. <clears throat> Ashley Lowe is graduating with her Master of Arts in Family Studies in Gerontology and has traveled from Warwick, Bermuda to receive her degree. Her mother, Maxine, who graduated from the Mount with her BA in 1980, is unable to attend, but we hope she'll be watching the ceremony via live streaming. So, hello, Maxine, we hope you're out there. Athlete Chelsea McKay is graduating with her Bachelor of Arts degree. Team captain of the Mount Mystics women's basketball team, Chelsea has been voted ACAA League Most Valuable Player for the past two seasons and ACAA Defensive Player of the Year for 2012. She was the winner of the prestigious uh, Derek McDermott Leadership Award in 2012, presented to a player on the women's basketball team who has shown great leadership on and off the court. We're very happy that Chelsea continues her studies in education at the Mount, so she continues to play on the team this year. <laughs> uh, I believe she's missing a game today, uh, a preseason game to be with us, and we're glad. Um, Anne Conrad is graduating with her Bachelor of Public Relations with distinction. Also an MSVU Mystic women's basketball player, Anne earned ACAA All-Star, CCAA Academic All-Canadian, ACAA Conference Champion, and CCAA Silver Medalist during her academic and basketball career at the Mount. Congratulations, Anne. We're sorry you're not going to be here this year. The continuing, yes. <clears throat> The continuing cycle of our academic year is filled with activities and accomplishments on the part of our students, faculty, and staff. Just want to take a moment to share a couple of highlights with you from the past few months. During the month of October, we celebrated Mi'kmaq History Month, and we now look forward to the opening of our Aboriginal Student Center and the hiring of an Aboriginal Student Counselor. Distance Education at the Mount celebrated its 30th anniversary this year. The first university in the Atlantic region to introduce televised courses, the Mount continues to be a pace setter in providing online accessible learning to our students and our communities. This summer we launched our Digital Media Zone, which will provide the next generation of distance learning technology. Also this summer, Dr. Tamara Franz Odendahl, Atlantic Chairholder for Women in Science and Engineering, hosted the first Girls Get Wise science retreat on our campus to mentor young girls interested in science and engineering. This past March, the Mount's Institute for Women, Gender, and Social Justice sponsored the conference Girls 2012 to celebrate International Women's Day and address issues faced by girls around the globe. Close to 300 delegates, including girls and boys from surrounding area schools, came together for more than 30 workshops over the two-day conference. Dr. Janice Keefe, director of the Nova Scotia Center on Aging, spoke to parliamentarians in Ottawa last April about caregiving policy for seniors as part of the Big Thinking series of distinguished speakers. And also, the Nova Scotia Center on Aging celebrates its 20th anniversary this year, and we're proud to have it under Dr. Keefe's leadership. Finally, I'd just like to give you a quick update on Project 2012, the most ambitious fundraising project ever undertaken by the Mount, which will see the construction of the Margaret Norrie McCain Center for Teaching, Learning, and Research on our campus. The McCain Center will be the first academic classroom building to be constructed on our campus in over 40 years and is eagerly awaited by our students, faculty, and staff. In keeping with the Mount's focus on advancing the education of women, the building will be dedicated throughout to honoring women's accomplishments, the first and only such building on a Canadian university campus. One of the women to whom we will pay tribute in the new building is our beloved Ruth Goldblum, past board chair of the Mount and an unparalleled community leader throughout her life. In the 1980s, Ruth, along with President, then President Margaret Fulton, led the Mount's first capital campaign to raise funds to build Rosaria Student Center on our campus. 
We were fortunate to remain one of Ruth's passionate causes, along with Pier 21, to which she devoted enormous energy to take it to the federal museum status it enjoys today. Until shortly before her death in August, Ruth was working right alongside me to raise funds for the McCain Center, belting out instructions over the telephone as to whom I should call and who would be an excellent donor for this project. And during this past summer, a number of Ruth's friends banded together to raise funds to honor Ruth in our new building as one of the inspiring women who will be featured in the Elizabeth and Fred Fountain Atrium at the entrance to the building. In a few short weeks, in fact, they raised half a million dollars for this cause so that we were able to tell Ruth before she died that not only would she be recognized as an inspiring woman, but so would her late mother, Rose Schwartz, who was a pioneering Cape Breton businesswoman and mentor to her daughter. Ruth was deeply moved to learn this news and to know that we were marching steadily towards our goal, as always, with her help and inspiration. There will be no other like her, and we mourn her loss in our community. Ruth would be happy, I know, and I feel she stands with me in spirit so that I can share the news with you that our fundraising goal of $12 million is getting very close. As of a week ago, with just over a year's time out in the field with Project 2012, we had hit the $10.2 million mark. Thank you. <laughs> and we will begin construction this spring. One additional feature of the McCain Center, and another unique one, is that it will feature a women's wall of honor in a garden-like setting in front of the building. Alumni, friends of the Mount, and those who simply wish to honor women who have been special in their lives are invited to purchase tiles to place on the wall in recognition of these women. And recently, we launched a virtual Women's Wall of Honor website where those who are buying tiles on the future real wall can post stories and photos of the women they're honoring, those mothers, sisters, wives, friends, and daughters who have enriched their lives. This week, we received a letter from the Honorable Marilyn Moore, Minister for the Status of Women in Nova Scotia, telling us that her office would be making a donation to purchase a tile on the wall, quote, in honor of all the remarkable women in our, pro in our province, past, present, and future. Minister Moore concludes her letter, I commend the work the Mount is doing to recognize and commemorate inspiring Nova Scotian and Canadian women, and I wish you all the best in your fundraising efforts for the university's new teaching, learning, and research center. The poet Jan Zwicky tells us, you are shaped by what you love. I know that my time at the Mount and the love I feel for this extraordinary university continue to shape me each day I'm here. And my hope for each of you graduates is that you too have been inspired during your time here to a love of learning that will continue to shape your lives in the years ahead of you. On behalf of our dedicated faculty and staff who've worked to guide your learning at the Mount, I wish, e I wish each of you the rich benefits you deserve as a result of the work you have done here at the Mount and your successful completion of your degree. I also trust that each of you will share those benefits with the society to which you, will, to which you belong, inspired by the example of our honorary doctorate recipient. Finally, as we begin our proceedings, I want to thank the team of faculty, staff, and volunteers who've worked together to make this convocation happen and to make it the success which our students deserve. Without their hard work, the celebration today would not have been possible, so please join me in thanking them. <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Lumpkin. I'd like to ask Dr. Margaret Casey to stand, please, and invite, I'm inviting Dr. Janice Keefe to come forward to present the honorary degree candidate, Dr. Margaret Casey. Thanks. Madam Chancellor, Madam President, distinguished guests, faculty, graduates, family, and friends, 
It is my great honor and pleasure to present to you Dr. Margaret Casey for the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa. Mary Ann Evans, better known as by her pen name George Eliot wrote, what do we live for if it is not to make life less difficult for each other? These words resonate throughout the biography of Dr. Margaret Casey. For Dr. Casey is no ordinary family physician, although that is likely exactly how she would like to be described. She is a doer, a trailblazer in social medicine, a person that's not about big accolades, but looks to what needs to get done and advocates until it is accomplished. She is a caring and compassionate physician with an outstanding commitment to patient-centered health care. After receiving her medical degree at Dalhousie University, we are proud to say that she began her medical career right here at Mount St. Vincent's Health Services Center in 1969. Margaret was intensely committed to achieving health for all. She joined the North End Halifax Healthcare Clinic in 1972 and for the next 25 years put her ideals into action by providing medical services to under underserved members of our Halifax community. Through Dr. Casey's leadership, the North End Clinic began to develop a, as a holistic health clinic with the collaborative efforts of multiple health professionals, such as nutritionists, nurses, therapists, etc., decades before it was vogue to do so. Dr. Casey's work with developing this com comprehensive and collaborative approach to healthcare delivery was driven by her unwavering belief that health care is everyone's fundamental right. She is one of those trailblazers in the social determinants of health, long before academic or policy communities ever labeled it as such. Moreover, Dr. Casey's deep social conscience and years of dedicated service is not limited to Canadian soil, but extends to volunteering at medical clinics in Haiti and in St. Lucia. As director of the Nova Scotia Center in Aging, I've had the privilege of working with Dr. Casey on Project 2012 Committee for the Center on Aging. Long after she formally retired, or as we say in my business, we don't really retire, simply rewire, she continues in many voluntary leadership roles. She's a, currently a member of six boards of directors, yes, I said six, four additional voluntary and professional committees, and chairs both the United Way's Health Living Council and the North End Clinic's board of directors. Dr. Casey has received an honorary degree and numerous awards, including the Order of Canada in 2005, the Progress Club of Women Award of Excellence in 2010, and the Elizabeth Seton Ward, which she and her late husband, Dr. Tom Casey, together received in 2003 for their more than 35 plus years of service to the community. Of course, like many women of her generation, her work was not just limited to her career or her voluntary activities. She was also a dedicated mother of three very successful children, all of whom will be joining us at some point today. Margaret, your leadership in recognizing the social determinants of health and building a team to meet these needs is an inspiration to all of us. Your quiet demeanor and humble approach while ever look, working to enhance the lives of others is a reflection of that sacred call to act justly, to love tenderly, and to walk humbly a mantra that will serve our graduates well as they become leaders in their chosen fields of practice. For her pioneering work in the social determinants of health, for her contributions to our city, our province, and internationally, and for all those who humbly toil for justice and for health for all, 
I ask you, Madam Chancellor, in the name of Mount St. Vincent University, to grant the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa, to Margaret Casey. On behalf of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, I admit you, Dr. Margaret Casey, to the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa, with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. So I would like to invite Dr. now Dr. Dr. Margaret Casey to come forward. Congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Church, and thank you, Janice, for your introduction. Madam Chancellor, Madam President, President Emerita, honored guests, and most of all, graduates. I am deeply honored to be here with you today <clears throat> to celebrate your significant achievements as you stand poised to step into your future. I want to recognize your accomplishments and your very hard work and to warmly congratulate you and your families. Here, we are surrounded by a powerful legacy. The Sisters of Charity, who founded this university for the higher education of women, had a vision which they pursued with inspiration, determination, and rigor. We now, we now see around us the evolution of that vision, of student body made up of women and men, an expansion of scholarly work, innovative programs, and this year, under the leadership of, our pres of your president, uh, a great momentum in growth. The university that we know today remains founded on the principles and philosophy of the Sisters of Charity. Commitment to social justice, a sense of obligation to society, academic excellence, and a firm determination to persist in the face of adversity, all of which form a compelling legacy. I would like now to offer a tribute to these remarkable women whose contributions have enriched this city, the province of Nova Scotia, and our country. The university vision, developing thoughtful, engaged citizens who make a positive impact on their world, expresses so well the, the underlying substance of Mount St. Vincent. And I feel particularly honored to be able to say a few words about what I consider to be a central part of this vision. To the graduates, you will leave the formal ceremony today with the tools you have acquired to make a positive impact at many levels. You will have exciting careers across many disciplines and will have the opportunity to become deeply involved in social societal issues. 
I am increasingly aware of the impact that a sense of obligation to society can have. And I would like to pass along some reflections. My thoughts stem largely from my growing recognition of the fundamental importance of social responsibility in the lives of all of, of, all of us. I should note here that I am speaking as much to myself as to you, because throughout our lives, there is a continuing exploration of the dimensions of these obligations to each other. I also want to underline the great good fortune that I have had in being able to work over the years with people whose example has taught me so much. My experience working at the North End Community Health Center in Halifax over many years has formed my thinking around what our responsibilities are to society and their importance. I want to assure you that this is not a political statement. Nor am I suggesting that there is only one dimension in which we can meet these obligations. I have simply come to the conclusion, prompted by the exposure to the realities of people's lives, that whatever we can give matters, and each of us has a role. Opportunities to shape change exist in every career path. Each of the graduates in this room with the education, skills, and values provided and formed at this university is equipped to make an enormous contribution. The key is to identify those issues that are important to you. Let me talk briefly about my own experience. By almost sheer chance, I began to work at a Halifax inner city medical clinic in 1972. This turned out to be a defining decision for my life. Very quickly, I began to understand the, the immense challenges for people who live in poverty and for whatever reason are marginalized or isolated. Every aspect of existence is affected and inevitably there is a significant impact on health. Nutritious food is out of reach, either not available in the neighborhood uh, or too expensive. Education may be curtailed and prospects for employment are therefore reduced. There is insufficient affordable housing. Stress levels are high and there is often hopelessness and anger. It was a clear and disturbing illustration of the profound influence on a community of the social determinants of health. In this context, responsibility has many expressions and interpretations, but what exactly does it mean? There are many, many uh, reflections on this, but George Bernard Shaw gave a general statement, and I found this very interesting. He said, I am of the opinion that my life belongs to the community, and as long as I live, it is my privilege to do for it whatever I can. The point is that wherever you see a need, you can make something happen. Fifty children in North End Halifax understand that very well. They are members of a community garden, including a greenhouse, which they manage. They plant, harvest, and sell vegetables, make and sell salad dressing from the, from the herbs they grow, and put these profits into a scholarship fund. This program gives these children practical education in business, ongoing guidance in uh, health and nutrition, and most importantly, a sense of their own potential. It is truly remarkable to see the commitment and pride within this group of boys and girls. Hope Blooms, an appropriate name for this initiative, is an outstanding success on all fronts and an example of exactly what I am trying to, uh, trying to convey. It was conceived and implemented by one of your fellow graduates. This is the kind of achievement that makes me think of these words. <clears throat> In life, you get one choice over and over again. That is to take conditions as they are or take responsibility for changing them. This is said by Cory Booker, mayor of Newark, known for attacking the problems of inner city life head on. 
This is pretty clear. You see a problem, an injustice, for example, and you either do nothing or you speak up. But the question is, do we speak up? Let me tell you a story. <clears throat> Some years ago in New York, the Museum of Modern Art set up an experiment to observe the responses of people to an unusual situation. A well-dressed middle-aged woman lay down in the middle of the sidewalk reading a book. The responses to, to this admittedly very odd sight were interesting. Some people paused, a uh, few stopped, fewer engaged the woman, but most people simply walked by. While this may merely be a typical reaction of people used to being confronted with the unpredictable, I think that this scenario can be a, a metaphor for our society. Why was there little attempt to, con to connect with this woman? Why didn't people want to know what was going on? To make change, you need to know the context. Why do we so often fail to ask questions or to take the next step? In every area of life, the most significant changes result when people have asked why. The responsibility is on you, your jobs in your volunteer work and in your community to identify those issues that need to be addressed. John D. Rockefeller said, I believe that every right implies a responsibility, every opportunity an obligation, every possession a duty. Now, after all your hard work you have put at th that you have put in for this degree, you have the responsibility, along with all of us, to give back. My plea to you is that you not sit on the sidelines of life, but that you bring your voice and talents to our society. You are indeed the future of our country, and we need you. Congratulations on your achievements and best wishes for the future. Thank you so much, Dr. Casey, for reminding us of our responsibility, uh, our responsibilities and our uh, and with such passion, thank you. I'd like to invite Ahmed Talisman, who's about to graduate with a BA in Honours uh, Psychology, to come forward and give the expression of gratitude. Dr. Casey, on behalf of the Fall 2012 graduating class, I would like to express our gratitude to you for taking the time from your schedule to celebrate with us today and to congratulate you on receiving your honorary degree. Dr. Casey, your work and achievements serve as a reminder to all of us that true excellence resides in the contributions we make and not simply in the positions that we occupy. Thank you for sharing your wisdom with us today and welcome to the MSVU alumni. We are very fortunate uh, to again welcome Shimon Valt and Diana Torbett with us. Uh, they came to many of our graduations and we really appreciate the wonderful music. And this is at the time in our ceremony where we have an uh, interlude, a time to reflect on the words of Dr. Casey and to think for the graduates about their futures. Uh, today they're going to be playing one of my absolute favorite pieces of music, Oh My Beloved Father by Puccini. <laughs>
Thank you so much. I'd like to invite Deanne McLeod, president of the Mount St. Vincent University Alumni Association to come forward. Madam Board Chair, Madam Chancellor, Madam President, distinguished guests, faculty, families and friends, and graduates. As president of the Mount St. Vincent Alumni Association, I have the privilege of speaking to you for a few moments today on this special occasion. Today is a day for you to celebrate your academic and personal success and to look forward to the future. I encourage you to enjoy every minute of it with pride. The time you have spent here at the Mount will influence how you think, how you work, and how you view the world for the rest of your lives. Your professors, your peers, and the greater Mount community have changed you in ways you may not even appreciate now, but it will become more apparent to you over time that the Mount way is unique and leaves a lasting impression. Throughout your time at the Mount, your experience has been shaped in part by Mount alumni. As guest lecturers, Co-op employers, university staff, mentors, sports fans, members of the Board of Governors, or in any number of other roles, you have felt the impact of the alumni that are staying connected with the Mount. I hope that when you leave here today, that you too will stay connected and offer your support to the future students of the Mount and to each other. As you are bestowed your degrees in just a few minutes, you will also receive a lapel pin bearing the coat of arms of the Mount from a member of the Alumni Association to mark your membership in the Association. You may ask, what does it mean to be a member of the Mount's alumni? For 90 years, Mount St. Vincent alumni have been working together in association to support our alma mater, to support Mount students, and to stay connected with our school and to each other. In addition to supporting several academic scholarships, bursaries, and prizes, the association has supported and contributed to Project 2012 so that future Mount students will be able to learn and research in a first-class academic facility. From what started as a group of 50 women over 90 years ago, the Alumni Association is now made up of more than 28,000 women and men who have come from around the globe to study at the Mount and who are now living and working all over the world. As a Mount alum, I urge you to wear your alumni pin and your Mount ring proudly. Please support your alma mater however you can and keep us informed about your achievements and your accomplishments in years to come. On behalf of the Mount alumni, congratulations and welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Deanne. So now is the moment that I know we have been waiting for, to see our graduates get their degrees. And I know many of you have cameras here and would like to take pictures of, the, of your graduate as the graduate cross, crosses the stage. Feel free to come down to the bottom. We ask you not to come onto the stage. Uh, and uh, thank you. As we go through the presentation of parchments to our graduates today, some will receive Senate awards of distinction. 
These awards are engraved pewter medals awarded by the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University. The undergraduate awards are presented in recognition of superior academic achievement to the student who graduates with distinction and highest grade point aggregate. Master's awards are presented upon the recommendation of each department. These awards will be presented along with the parchments. And now we can begin. Madam Vice Chancellor and President, it is my privilege to present to you the candidates for collegiate honors of graduation. I attest that they have successfully completed the required courses of study. Mount St. Vincent University confers the certificate of business in of business administration on Rayleigh Foster. on Kimberly Ann Porter. The Certificate in Information Technology on Sarah Monroe. Madam Chancellor, it is my privilege to present to you the candidates for the collegiate honors of graduation. I attest that they have successfully completed the required courses of study, and I ask that they be admitted to the baccalaureate degree. Mount St. Vincent University confers the degree of Bachelor of Arts on Catherine Christelle Leanne Barkley with distinction and highest aggregate and Senate Medal of Distinction. On behalf of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, I admit you, Catherine, to the degree of Bachelor of Arts with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Jason Douglas Bremner. Jason, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Christian Gordon Johns. Christian, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Chelsea Elizabeth McKay. Josie, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Danielle Jean Turgeon, with distinction. Danielle, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Jessica Lynn Wells. Jessica, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Arts. These are our BA graduates. Mount St. Vincent confers the degree of Bachelor of Arts Honors on Imad Talisman. On behalf of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, I admit you, Ima, to the degree of Bachelor of Arts Honors with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Mount St. Vincent University confers the degree of Interdisciplinary Bachelor of Arts Peace and Conflict Studies on Dale Eshelby. On behalf of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, I admit you, Dale, to the degree of uh, Bachelor of Arts, inter of the Interdisciplinary Bachelor of Arts, Peace and Conflict Studies, with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Yeah. 
Mount St. Vincent University confers the degree of Bachelor of Science on Anna Bielica. On behalf of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, I admit you, Anna, to the degree of Bachelor of Science with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Madam Chancellor, it is my privilege to present to you the candidates for the collegiate honors of graduation. I attest that they have successfully completed the required courses of study and ask that they be admitted to the baccalaureate degree. The degree of Bachelor of Arts, uh, the Bachelor of Applied Arts, Information Technology, Cooperative Education route on Jason R. Vickers. On behalf of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, I admit you, Jason, to the degree of Bachelor of Applied Arts, Information Technology, with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations, good luck, Jason. The degree of Bachelor of Arts, Child and Youth Study, on Joseph Daniel McDougall. On behalf of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, I admit you, Jason, to the degree of Be Batch Justin? Joseph. <laughs> to the degree of Bachelor of Arts, Child and Youth Study, with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Good luck. Amanda Helen Perry, with distinction, and the Senate Medal of Distinction. Amanda, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Arts, Child and Youth Study. Congratulations. Caitlin Grace Rowe. Caitlin, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Arts, Child and Youth Study. Amy Robin Seaton. Amy, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Arts, Child and Youth Study. Congratulations. <laughs> Laurel Sullivan. Laurel, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Arts, Child and Youth Study. Patricia Nicole White. Patricia, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Arts, Child and Youth Study. Congratulations. The degree of Bachelor of Business Administration on Hamila Ahmad Abedile. On behalf of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, I admit you, Helena, to the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration. Abdu Majid Ali Akbar. Abdu, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration. Congratulations. Thank you. Abdullah Aluhib. Abdullah, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration. Renette Melanie Bailey Nolan. Lynette, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration. Rahib Bargout. Rahib, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration. Courtney Rose Davison, Cooperative Education Route. 
Courtney, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration. Kimberly Dunn, with distinction and highest aggregate and the Senate Medal of Distinction. Kimberly, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration. Jenna M. Hart, Cooperative Education Option. Janet, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration. Nashat Abadu Halim Hijazi. Nashim, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration. Sophie Borgorin Hoig, with distinction. Sophie, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration. Charles Krishna Morthy. Charles, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration. Willow Faith McDonald. Rule, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Christine McKechn, Cooperative Education Option with Distinction. Christine, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration. Chelsea Jane McFarlane. Chelsea, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration. Thank you. Christina McKenzie. Christina, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration. Congratulations. Julian Olatun Nakad Roberts. Julian, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration. Jenna D. Silmarie. Jenna, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration. Sultan Jamil Sofi. Sultan, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration. Brittany Lee Diane Stewart. Brittany, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration. Congratulations. Jillian Taggart. Jillian, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration. Kimberly Lynette Vino. Kimberly, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration. Angela Wall with distinction. Angela, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration. Kathleen Woodle. Kathleen, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration. Congratulations. Sim Ing Jin. Sing him, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration. Congratulations. Muthana Zora. Muthana, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration.
the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration in association with the Bermuda College on Andrew Warren Fubler. On behalf of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, I admit you, Andrew, to the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration in association with Bermuda College with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. The degree of Bachelor of Public Relations, Cooperative Education route on Kari Lee Atwell Burrow. On behalf of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, I admit you, Kari, to the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Thank you. Good job. Suzanne Chantel Bartlett. <laughs> Suzanne, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Jessica Marita Blackie. Jessica, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations. Corey Aaron Ross Burris with distinction. Corey, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Anne Conrad with distinction. And I confer the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations. Thank you. Maya Lisa Grieg with distinction. Maya, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations. Thank you. Good Jacqueline Christine Klaus. Jacqueline, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Nicole Roxanne Lawrence with distinction and highest aggregate and the Senate Medal of Distinction. Nicole, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Katrina Layton. Katrina, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Kale Fane Lonnie with distinction. Kale, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Kayla McDonald with distinction. Kayla, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations. Thank you. Melanie McDonald with distinction. Melanie, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Julie Colina Maureen Todd with distinction. Julie, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations. Megan Geraldine Murphy. <laughs> Megan, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Joelle Amanda Nickerson. Joelle, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations. Amanda Jean Rose. Amanda, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations. Thank you. Hi, Mom. Melanie Dawn Rusniak. Rusniak. Melanie, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations. Rebecca Salome with distinction. 
Rebecca, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Michaela Erica Sani. Michaela, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Good. Jillian Amanda Smith with distinction. Jillian, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. The degree of Bachelor of Science, Applied Human Nutrition, Dietetics, on Nancy Laura L. Tawil, Integrated Internship Education Program. On behalf of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, I admit you, Nancy, to the degree of Bachelor of Science, Applied Human Nutrition, with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Good. Terry Lynn Finbo. Terry, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Science Applied Human Nutrition. Congratulations. Good. Brianne M. Hopkins, Integrated Internship Education Program with Distinction and Highest Aggregate and the Senate Medal of Distinction. Rianne, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Science Applied Human Nutrition. Congratulations on all those awards. Thank you very much. Brittany Lynn Knowles, Integrated Internship Education Program with Distinction. Brittany, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Science Applied Human Nutrition. Hillary Elizabeth Rankin, Integrated Internship Education Program. Hillary, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Science Applied Human Nutrition. Congratulations. The degree of Bachelor of Science Applied Human Nutrition Dietetics Honors on Brandon John Ford Geller. On behalf of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, I admit you, Brandon, to the degree of Bachelor of Science Applied Human Nutrition Honors, with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Good luck. The degree of Bachelor of Science, Science Communication, on Leanne Sharon Marriott. On behalf of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, I admit you, Leanne, to the degree of Bachelor of Science, Science Communication, with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Danielle Jane Pinckney with Distinction and the Senate Medal of Distinction. Danielle, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Science, Science Communication. The degree of Bachelor of Tourism and Hospitality Management on Rebecca C. Atkinson. On behalf of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, I admit you, Rebecca, to the degree of Bachelor of Tourism and Hospitality Management with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Kyle Stubbs, Cooperative Education Route. Kyle, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Tourism and Hospitality Management. Congratulations. Oh, okay. Madam Chancellor, it is my privilege to present to you the candidates for the Collegiate Honors of Graduation. I attest that they have successfully completed the required courses of study and ask that they be permitted to the Master's degree. Mount St. Vincent University confers the degree of Master of Applied Human Nutrition on Kathwa Al Mutawa. On behalf of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, I admit you, Kathwa, to the degree of Master of Applied Human Nutrition, with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Zhao Zeng. 
Sal Zane, I confer the degree of Master of Applied Human Nutrition. Congratulations. Thank you. The degree of Master of Public Relations on Deanne Gamble. On behalf of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, I admit you, Deanne, to the degree of Master of Public Relations with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. <laughs> Melissa Lynn Russworm, who also receives a Senate Medal today. Melissa, I confer the degree of, bat of Master of Public Relations. The degree of Master of Arts in Child and Youth Study on Jessica Marie Morash. On behalf of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, I admit you, Melissa, to the degree of Master Jessica. Jessica <laughs> to the degree of Master of Arts in Child and Youth Study, with all the rights and privileges <laughs> pertaining thereto. Thank you. The degree of Master of Arts in Family Studies and Gerontology, Gerontology on Janet Boswell. On behalf of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, I admit you, Janet, to the degree of Master of Arts in Family Studies and Gerontology, with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Ashley Danielle Jamie Lowe. Ashley, I confer the degree of Master of Arts in Family Studies and Gerontology. Congratulations. The degree of Master of Science Applied Human Nutrition on Marissa Cornelia Van Engelen. On behalf of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, I admit you, Marissa, to the degree of Master of Science Applied Human Nutrition with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. In absentia, Madam Chancellor, in addition, we ask you to confer the appropriate degrees on all those presented to the University Senate. I confer degrees in absentia on those persons so designated by the Dean. Now we have an opportunity to present some awards and prizes to some very special students. The Graduate Thesis Award is awarded to a student who has completed a thesis that is of exceptional quality, includes evidence of well-developed independent research skills, and makes a contribution to their academic discipline. The 2012 Graduate Thesis Award is presented to Thea Brown who completed a Master of Arts in Family Studies and Gerontology. Her thesis was entitled, Assessing the Physical Environment of Adult Day Programs for Persons with Dementia. Unfortunately, Thea is not able to be with us today. Kappa Gamma Pi. Membership in Kappa Gamma Pi, Honor Society of Catholic Universities for Women, is awarded to graduates who, in addition to high scholastic standing and a good record in extracurricular activities, give promise to an academic leadership in the future. The first recipient of the undergraduate Kappa Gamma Pi Award is Nicole Lawrence, Bachelor of Public Relations. Nicole is a fitting recipient of this award that recognizes what has been accomplished and the pot potential for future accomplishments. In her cooperative education placements with the Canadian National Institute for the Blind, Nicole led two national awareness campaigns, Glaucoma Awareness Month and Veterans Outreach. These campaigns not only attracted new clients, but helped bring stronger relationships between the CNIB 
in the medical community. Nicole was heavily involved in a CI, CNIB fundraising activity, which was recognized by the Canadian Public Relations Society with a Merit Award for Innovation. She also provided assistance to Bridgeway Academy in their fundraising activities. In 2011, Nicole was named the Public Relations Co-op Student of the Year. After receiving this award, Nicole indicated that co-op allowed me to discover that I am happiest when I'm making a difference in another individual's life. Given her contributions so far, I expect that Nicole will have a very happy life. The President's Prize. The President's Prize is a special award donated by the university president to a member of the graduating class whose energy, generosity, and commitment have enriched the, enriched the university during their time as students and who, sh who show promise that, they, that this commitment will continue as alumni. It is with great pleasure we award the Graduate President's Prize to Christian Terakita, MA Family Studies and Gerontology. Unfortunately, Kristen was unable to be with us today. And now I'd like to invite Dale Ashby to come to the platform. The valedictorian prize provides all valedictorians with a lasting memento of their achievement and contribution to the graduating class. To be chosen valedictorian, the student must have maintained a strong academic record, must have been actly, actively involved in a number of extracurricular activities, either on campus or in the community, must have been nominated as a fitting spokesperson for the graduating class by their peers and or their faculty, and I am pleased to present the valedictorian award along with the undergraduate Kappa Gamma Pi Award and the undergraduate President's Award to Dale as Shelby BA Peace and Conflict Studies. Dale graduates today with a GPA of 3.5 from the Peace and Conflict program, a program that is much a way of life for Dale as a subject for study. Dale overcame many personal challenges to stand here today, among the more practical of which was a five-hour daily commute to campus from her home in Lockport, where she raised her son and took on part-time jobs to make ends meet. Whatever the challenges, Dale used her experiences and her triumphs over adversity to help and inspire others, including her fellow students and teachers here at MSVU. Like the founder of the Antigonish movement, Moses Cody, Dale's passion is to assist each person she meets to be masters of their own destiny. Her animating spirit was also behind the efforts to have the schools of Lockport formally accepted into the UNESCO Associated Schools Project Network, for which she was personally cited by the Lieutenant Governor of Nova Scotia and the Nova Scotia House of Assembly. As if this were not enough, during her studies at the Mount, she completed two Canadian Rural Secretariat projects as community liaison, and was one of only two North Americans to be accepted into and to complete a diploma in community development leadership from the Cody International Institute. What does the future hold? Dale is spearheading, making a difference, partnering for, partnering for change an initiative to provide leadership that uses revitalizing and trend-setting sustainable community development 
that builds on social and moral responsibility. Congratulations. Mount St. Vincent administration, Mount St. Vincent board, staff, professors, distinguished guests, and families. I thank you for sharing today with us, and I encourage you right now with great enthusiasm and great gusto to raise a cheer for our graduates here. Some of my fellow graduates I know, and others I don't, and that's not surprising. As was said, my home's more than a couple hours away, and I've often had to commute, and was working, raising a son, and a particular colossal challenge that I'll touch on later. It's taken me, count them guys, eight years to get here. <laughs> but as we tr transition from this learning environment to our next step, each of us graduates has to pause for a moment and think about who has been instrumental in helping us get here. I want to send out a thank you to those who supported me here at the Mount, and to my family, and to my co-learners. And I want to thank all of your families as well, your families and those who have supported you, because it's the support that each of us has, re has, has received that has been crucial. I am so gr proud to be graduating from the Peace and Conflict Degree Program. The Mount is committed to academic excellence, the pursuit of knowledge, a strong tradition of social responsibility, and to the advancement of women. Peace and Conflict Studies was an interdisciplinary program where we examined the roots of conflict and the foundations of peace. We explored discrimination, poverty, violence, war and justice, peace, freedom, and the human community. We worked through options and initiatives in peacemaking and conflict resolution that ranged from the person to the nation, to the global forum. If you think about what we see around us in our workplaces and in politics, in the school bullying stories that touch our heart, and in gender and sexual choice discrimination, our First Nations conditions, and the everyday turmoil that, we, that we're faced with around the world, I believe the discontinued peace and conflict program spoke to the Mount's reason for being. But this is our special moment. This is when we think about what happens to us next. As we think about the future, I want to share a small story with you. While I've been studying here, every so often, I come up with what seems to me is an earth-shattering epiphany or a colossal gem of wisdom. Now, because I don't want my son to make all the same mistakes I've made, and some of them many times over, I send these gems of wisdom to him. I try to convey their importance and the lesson and the learning that they contain. The other day, my son said to me, and my son is 23 now, and he's drop-dead gorgeous, OK? He said, <laughs> You know, Mom, all those profound messages you send to me, I don't pay all that much attention to them. <laughs> but I always count on, your, on how you're here for me unconditionally. 
So what have I learned from this? Wisdom, no matter how brilliant it is, is only valuable if it's shared at the right time in the right way. People have to be ready to receive it. If what you have to pass on to the world is not received with open arms, do not give up, okay? Do not give up on what you need to share. You and I and the people that we touch, we are the people that are going to make a difference in this world. Be there in whatever careers lay ahead of you unconditionally to make a difference. Maybe my son doesn't pick up on my gems of wisdom right away, but I see them. I see them in the choices that he makes. I see them in his success. I hear them come back to me when people talk about him. So what does this tell me? It tells me that the way I can give back is by believing in myself, okay? Believing in my ability and the process that's involved in making a difference. By realizing that if I keep investing in people and doing the things that I know are important, my efforts will make a difference. Once again, Making a difference is achieved by investing in what you believe, by believing in people, and by believing in the process. I also congratulate Mount St. Vincent today. This I do because in its mission, the Mount promotes accessibility and flexible learning opportunities and flexible services. Now, in what seems like a lifetime ago, I suffered a catastrophic brain trauma. This brain trauma has left me with a lifelong learning disability. Over my eight years at the Mount, I've had to work 10 times harder than the average student. For all my days left to come, I will have to work 10 times harder than the average individual in everything I do. But I have learned ways to help myself. And with the support of others, I have done well. I do well. I can't wait to go out there and do better. So what do I want you to take away from this? In life, things happen. So when your colossal challenge comes, be it in one foul swoop or just a culmination of many small, overwhelming things, believe in me when I say you will succeed. Sometimes elegantly and other times not, but you will succeed. In every class I've attended, in the margins of my note, there is an epiphany that I have captured from you, my fellow learners. You are brilliant. You have inspired me. I want each one of you to go forward and look for and not be afraid to ask for the success that will make a difference, or for the support that will make a difference in your success. I want you to believe unconditionally in yourselves and to believe unconditionally in others and to invest unconditionally in the process of making a difference. How you rise to the occasion, how you overcome your challenges, this will be the bedrock in your own personal story of success. Go out, go out and face each challenge. Face them with gusto. The Mount's vision, as we've heard, is to impact all members of the community as it develops thoughtful, engaged citizens who make a positive impact on the world.
I truly look forward to hearing how you will make a difference, how you will impact the world. Congratulations for what you've achieved today, but even more important, I congratulate you for what you're about to achieve unconditionally. Thank you. Following the convocation ceremony, graduates and guests are invited to a reception in the Seton lobby. I now declare this convocation closed. So, so now that you've all sat down, I'm going to ask you all to stand up again to sing O Canada. <laughs> <laughs> 